Your Excellency, before coming to Romania as an ambassador of the State of Israel, you were in Romania between 1988 and 1999 as a of the ambassador of Israel. That's right. How was Romania then and how is Romania now for you? You know, when I was proposed, uh, when I asked to be sent again to Romania, uh, they told me at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that I could not come twice to the same place. And I told them, it's not the same place. Romania then was the only uh, communist country with whom Israel had relations. And it was very important for us to have an embassy in Bucharest. Uh, it was then a beautiful country with very nice people that I couldn't relate to because they wouldn't speak to me. It was a very difficult life, maybe easier for a diplomat, but still very difficult. But the place was nice. I liked it then, but it was difficult. Coming back, for me, it's every day a revelation. I really every day find new things. It's the place that I knew. The, the streets, they are the same, but they have changed. You know, it's like getting into a, a mirror. It's the other side of the mirror. Now it's a modern city. It's very agreeable. The people is the thing that have the most changed for me because now they talk to me. They are open. They are friendly. Even going out of, of Bucharest is a, is a real pleasure. At the time when we were going out, it was a, an adventure. We had to take everything with us. Now the, the routes, the, 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 the ways, the highways are better and the hotels are nice and uh, again the people are very nice and uh, the most important thing is the opening the opening of the government of the ministries of the people i'm working with they don't need anyone to watch what they are saying and uh, i really love the place which do you think are the most important fields in which israel and romania could cooperate Every, every field uh, can be uh, open for cooperation. We are trying to expand everything that is dealing with industry and, uh, and finances. We have very good relations in the field of um, transfer of know-how in uh, military and cyber and internal security. The culture is very good, uh, the exchange between the two countries. Uh, agriculture can be done together. So everywhere I turn, I see a possibility of cooperation between the two countries. Because recently there was an agreement signed between Romania and the State of Israel regarding ecological policies when it comes to ecological waste. What's, what's the status of that agreement now? It's, uh, it's uh, with the legal advisors, and I'm sure that uh, it can be developed uh, better. We have a know-how in uh, uh, water uh, cleaning and, and soil uh, uh, fertilizers that can be applied also to Romania. Although we are a small country with not so many water and not so many uh, arable fields, uh, and Romania has beautiful land and a lot of water, but there are some problems here in the development, uh, agricultural development that we can try and, uh, and uh, work together. When it comes to the Jewish community of Romania, how is it special from other Jewish communities in the world? It's very small. Uh, they have the memory of being a very important community that uh, was very well involved in the Romanian life. They, were, uh, they felt Romanian. There were 800,000 Jews in Romania before the Second World War, 400 after, 400,000 after the World War. Today there are a few thousands. Uh, it's a community that's, that is disappearing and we are doing our, ut our, our utmost so that the, the important things here, the synagogues, the culture, the literature, the schools can still work here so that the community will flourish here. And uh, that's our concern, but it's also uh, 
the concern of uh, the Romanian authorities. Do you, th do you think they took a step forward towards... Of course, of course. Helping uh, different places to rebuild the, the synagogues is very important, to maintain the cemeteries. There are tombs here that date from the 15th century. Uh, and it was a very important uh, community in Romania, and I think it's important also for Romania, not only for the Jewish community, to be sustained by the uh, Romanian government, yes. This leads me to a question which is a little bit delicate, but it also has to do with something that is happening in Eastern Europe generally, because the way the Jewish people were treated by Romanians is not completely approached by, by academia, it's not written in the... I think that uh, Romania has made a big step in recognizing uh, what happened here and that it had a part in the Holocaust, in the transfer of Jews to Transnistria, uh, in collaboration, at least at the beginning of the, of the war, with the uh, Nazi authorities. And Romania, after the communism, has come to accept that, confront that, and take responsibility, and that's very important. There are a lot of countries that didn't do that. And uh, that's why I appreciate uh, the steps that the Romanian government is taking uh, in, that, uh, in that matter. Um, National Day for the Remembrance of the Holocaust was established here in Romania, apart from the International Day. Again, that proves the, the, uh, the way that uh, Romania treats that subject. There have been uh, consultations between the Israeli government and the Romanian government regarding cybersecurity. What's the status now? Well, I'm sure you know that there was, except from cybersecurity, there was a, a joint uh, training that took place about three weeks ago, a month ago, between the uh, special forces of Israel and, uh, and Romania. And that's very important. It shows how much we are working together. We have uh, agreements uh, concerning cyber security. There are different uh, um, companies that are working together. And it's something that is important uh, in all of Europe. We are under uh, threats of cyber crime, uh, be it terrorist or be it financial. And uh, we need to uh, work together to uh, maintain our security, the security of the citizens. Could we speak now about wars of intelligence more than wars of armies? I mean, when it comes to the whole world. So the world has come, become such a complicated place. Uh, fight between armies, like we knew in the 20th century. Well, <laughs> I'm a little too young for that. But uh, uh, the w army in facing another army, uh, that's not what's happening anymore. Either it's factions of groups, terrorists or others, uh, small groups attacking regular army. Uh, it's not anymore a war of army against army. So either it's those groups or in a larger, broader way, it is uh, intelligence, it is cyber, it is uh, economic war, uh, it is uh, oil and drugs and uh, attacking civilians. That's unfortunately the way that the world is uh, fighting these days. And when it comes to terrorism worldwide, what would Israel have as an advice for the, for the world that is experiencing I'm afraid we are always one war behind with terrorism. Uh, we know what happened, we don't know where it will go. We unfortunately have a long history of fighting terrorism. And we are doing quite well when it's groups of terrorists. When it's uh, lone wolves, as it's happening now, I'm afraid no one has an answer. Look what happened in Belgium. Look what happened in Paris. Look what's happening in Israel when every day uh, an individual is attacking people. He does not belong to a group and he does it 
only by himself and no intelligence can know what he's going to do. So we have maybe to get to the roots of the, of the terrorism. Why are these people uh, feeling frustrated? What are their demands? Uh, the terrorism that has uh, hit Europe is uh, Daesh uh, incentive. Uh, we have to, we, the world, have to address what's happening at the root in, in uh, Syria, in Iran, and try to stop it from invading us. And when it comes to Syria, because Israel has a complicated <laughs> relationship with Syria, how does Israel see the solution or the solutions or the... <laughs> Israel tried not to be involved in what's happening in that uh, war. It's, it's a clan war, it's a religious war, it's an interest war in, internal to the Muslim world with interventions from outside uh, players, United States, Russia, Turkey, Egypt. We are trying not to get involved there. We have a frontier with Syria. We are watching it very closely so that it won't uh, come into our territory. We are a little bit worried of what is happening in Jordan. But again, we, don't, we, we cannot know what's going to happen in Syria because every day is different. As we talk today, there is a ceasefire. I cannot wall for uh, the ceasefire to be there in two hours. Things are moving so fast in the Middle East that you can never know what's going to happen. And the, the most difficult thing is that you really don't know who are the good guys and who are the, bi the bad guys. You have uh, games of alliances that sometimes are not natural. Uh, the, the alliance uh, between the Russian and Syria, the war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. These are things that are not clear, that are not logical. It's the Middle East. And how long does it take to know who are the good guys and the bad guys? It changes all the time. <laughs> Okay, it's evident that Daesh is not really a good guy. Uh, the, the alliances that are taking place there makes it very difficult to know who is good and who is not. Because if Iran is against Daesh and Saudi is against Iran, so is Saudi a good guy or a bad guy? Uh, Egypt is against Turkey. Turkey is attacking Daesh. Again, who is the good and who is the bad? So it's too complicated to, to have it in black and white. Because of the conflict in Syria, there's a, well, the media calls it a flood of refugees, a situation yes. of refugees. Yes. And Israel also has a history regarding refugees. Yes, that's right. How would be the best way to handle such a situation? Not to keep them as refugees. You know, uh, after the Second World War and during the 10 years after the creation of Israel, uh, uh, thousands, tens of thousands of refugees arrived to the new state. In the beginning, it was difficult. They were encamped, but it took very little time to have them in housing, having work, uh, having uh, their children in schools and integrate into the, the community. On the other side, and now I want to touch the, the question of the Palestinian refugees, they became refugees approximately at the same time. There were 800,000 refugees that l fled what was going to be the state of Israel. There are now more than three millions. They are kept in the situation of refugees for 68 years. That's not a normal situation to continue to be refugees and they continue to be refugees, not only in uh, the, the, what is called the territories, but also in Jordan, in Lebanon, and in other Arab states. They could not become citizen of these states. And the Arab states keep them in that uh, situation to keep the hate 
and the revolt and the fight against Israel uh, alive. Would they have signed an agreement with Israel in 1948? There wouldn't be any more refugees today. And they are transferring that feeling of being a refugee to their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren, a situation of feeling a victim. Mm -hmm. And they cannot develop. Now, I want to show you. This is a doll that was supposed to be a present for Christmas for Palestinian children in Israel. It was, uh, it was taken, the, the Israeli um, uh, told, uh, the one, how do you say? Uh, uh, the, the, the custom. The custom. Yeah. They, they, they found that in a, in a container of uh, what was supposed to be toys for children for Christmas. They are teaching children hate from their, from their very small age. It's, it's a, they don't teach the children to work toward peace. They teach them again and again hatred. And you ask me about refugees in general. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe has known history of refugees. People from Germany into Poland, from Poland into Germany, from Italy into France, from Spain into... And there are no refugees anymore. If you open your door, if you integrate them, uh, you can hope that the refugee question will be solved. Yeah, and maybe it's a question of the fact that maybe there is a fear that to, among the refugees there are the lone wolves you were talking about. You have to take the chance. You cannot uh, close your door for thousands of people because one of them may be the lone wolf. Mm -hmm. There are women, there are children, there are real refugees. You must try to make the difference. You were talking about the hate among the Palestinians, yes. but there's also hate among the Jewish people. I mean, there were attacks in, in Palestine made by Jewish people. How, how does... You know, we've been in state of war for a hundred years, before the creation of the State of Israel. Uh, Arab that did not accept the uh, Jewish settlers in, uh, is in what was given by the British and by the uh, United Nations to create the, the State of Israel, have been attacking Jews for 100 years. Uh, we are talking about the recent attacks, but I remember in the 50s, mm -hmm. immediately after the creation of Israel, you were not talking about, about uh, terrorists, you were talking about Fedayin that crossed the, the border and came to attack uh, citizen near the border, kill the, the crop, uh, the coal, cows, and uh, attack the people. So it's not something new. And as much as we try to teach our children uh, to be uh, democratic, to be open, to uh, respect the law, you have uh, hot-minded youngsters that sometimes take the law in their hands. And it's true. There have been attacks uh, made by uh, Israeli against Palestinians. They have been arrested. They have been judged. They will be in prison for a very long time. Uh, I don't deny that the hatred has developed also in Israel, but I don't see uh, the same reaction in the Palestinian world. When someone is made a uh, an attack against an Israeli or is liberated from an Israeli p prison, he is considered as a hero, which is not the case when we are talking about Israelis. There's a long Palestinian discourse that Israel it has policies that prohibit Palestinians to, to, to be rich, to, 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 to have enough food, to water, supplies. Okay, um, I don't want to sound uh, a propagandist, but I suggest to anyone that says that to look at the uh, standard of living of the Palestinians under the Israeli uh, control and of the Palestinians in other Arab worlds. 
uh, it's true that Palestinians are not Israeli citizens. They are not citizens of the state of Israel. They are an entity that is not at peace with us. But we are doing the utmost so that they'll have good conditions of living. And if there weren't any uh, frictions between them and us, it would be easier for them. As for the Palestinians that are citizens of the state of Israel, Israeli citizens, they have the same rights as any other Israeli citizen. They are judges at the high court. They are members of the, of the parliament, even if their discourse is anti-Israeli, because we are a democratic state, and if someone wants to speak against the state of Israel, he can. Uh, we had um, Miss Israel, that was Arab. We have uh, presenters in the TV that are Arabs. We have military that are Arabs, policemen that are Arabs. I mean, they can do whatever they want, if they want. Mm -hmm. The ambassador of Palestine recently stated that the actual core of what's happening in the Middle East is the conflict between Israel and Palestine. What's your response to that? Uh, that's the known discourse. For years it has been, if the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict is resolved, everything is going to be okay in the Middle East. Let me remind you that what happened in Tunisia, uh, in Libya, in Egypt, what, what was called the Arab Spring, was abs had absolutely nothing to do with Israel. It was internal uh, problems of this society. What is happening with Daesh in uh, the north of, of Syria has nothing to do with Israel. Uh, we have good relations with Egypt and with Jordan, two countries that signed agreement, peace agreement as ambassadors in Israel. So whenever it's possible, uh, the things are settled and it doesn't settle the whole conflict of the Middle East. There's a, a, a boycott against Israel, which is a very grassroots boycott, but to which the U.S. and Great Britain, they said no to, they, they, they protected Israel. What's, what's the stance that Israel has towards this boycott, this economic boycott? Oh, it's not really an economic boycott, and it's very complicated. It's, it's a, a, a way uh, to, um, to boycott Israeli goods that were uh, manufactured in the territory, so-called uh, depriving the Palestinian of their uh, rights to, uh, to the land and uh, putting the name on Israel on it. Uh, we think it's, it's unfair because a lot of Palestinians are working in those uh, uh, places, in those industries, in the fields there, and if you boycott that production, in fact you are boycotting Palestinians. Uh, and it, the, the point is that even if you want to boycott only uh, what was produced in the Palestinian territories, there's absolutely no reason to boycott artists, to boycott universities, to boycott Israeli goods that were made in Israel. So if you want to boycott, then you boycott everything, all the uh, production of Israel in the field of uh, medicine, in the field of science, in the field of culture. I don't see uh, the world ready to boycott Israel. Because you're talking about artists, last year one of the guests what one of the literary guests of Romania was David Grossman. Yes. And uh, he is a supporter of peace in the Middle East. Yes. He has his, and a lot, of, a lot of intellectuals actually have this discourse supporting peace in the Middle East. Yes. Is it possible or is it just a really nice story? I believe it's possible, but I want 
with that to return to to what you you just asked me about the boycott most of the uh, universities most of the intellectual in Israel support the peace process boycotting them is stupid <laughs> really really uh, David Grossman and others are in favor of a peaceful solution and I think most of the Israelis are in favor of a peaceful solution having two state solution Israeli uh, state uh, and near it a uh, Palestinian state each one in his house don't we don't have to love each other we don't have to live one with the other just one aside the other and I'm sure it's possible the only uh, the only problem to this day is that the Palestinian authorities do not accept the reality of a Jewish state uh, being in Israel. And uh, they didn't accept it in the partition program of the United Nations in 1948. It was a decision to have an Arab state and a Jewish state side by side. And until now, they don't accept the idea of a Jewish state.